and we have to really escalate the noise we make so that we'll be heard. Welcome to Gay USA. I'm Andy Hum. I'm Ann Northrup. And our guest at the top of the hour is Stephen Goldstein, uh, the longtime gay and political activist, here to tell us about his new book, The Turn On. We both have it. How the powerful <laughs> make us like them from Washington to Wall Street to Hollywood. And he'll tell us who is winning the likability sweepstakes in the presidential contest. It's an insidious and depressing story, except Stephen <laughs> makes it so much fun. <laughs> we'll get to that. Uh, meanwhile, not so much fun, bisexual Congress member Katie Hill, of course, resigned this week in a maybe a sex scandal, but is vowing to fight against revenge porn. They all promise to fight things. Uh, we'll discuss some of that. Uh, a story with a happy, happier ending, a gay police sergeant who suffered harassment and discrimination from the department has won a big settlement. Big. In, in Missouri, of all places. And in Virginia, a human rights commissioner <laughs> who called gay people an abomination is allowed to keep his post. Maybe not by the time you watch this show. We can hope. Uh, a Keith Haring mural from the early 80s is about to make millions for the Catholic Church. Ah, oh, they need it. Uh, Bogota, Colombia has elected an out lesbian mayor, which is a first for a major city in Latin America, uh, although more and more common here. Uh, 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 <laughs> more than 900 children in a little town in Pakistan have been infected with HIV. It's a horrible story. And, and thousands of others, by the way. Yes. And there is a new movie planned on Elizabeth Taylor's AIDS activism. Yeah. We'll tell you about that. Yeah. Uh, but our guest is Stephen Goldstein. Welcome, Stephen. Now, let's tell people about you. you. You were the founder of Garden State Equality and accomplished an awful lot uh, there in New Jersey. You were immortalized in the movie Free Held by Steve Carell. Maybe you could put that picture up. Uh, for your work on behalf of Laurel Hester, uh, the uh, uh, police officer who was suing for benefits for her partner. You're a civil rights lawyer, a lawyer for the House Judiciary Committee, uh, a communications director in the U.S. Senate, the director of the Anne Frank Center for Mutual Respect, a teacher and a rabbinical student. And, and a former producer for and, Oprah. And now, and now <laughs> the author of The Turn On, How the Powerful Make Us Like Them, from Washington to Wall Street to Hollywood. I have to start by asking you, uh, captivate us and give us hope. Great. <laughs> These are two of the traits out of eight that you say are important for likability. So let me captivate us. Let me captivate you right away. <laughs> Not only will Donald Trump be impeached, the prediction, my prediction is he will leave office because of his personality. Now I know most viewers out there will say, but he didn't have a great personality <laughs> in 2016. Hmm. You know what, he had enough of a personality plus help from the Russians to win the election. He certainly has a base that found him likable. The problem with Donald Trump is, however lack of like, lack of likability he had in 2016, it's plunged. So for example, I talk about the eight traits of likability that public figures have. My book is about examining 300 business people, politicians, and celebrities, entertainers. It's the biggest name dropping book <laughs> I've read name -dropping my book. entire life. It's absolutely obscene, isn't it? It's it a is. name dropping book. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a great bathroom beach book. It is. So, um, and you knew many of them. Yeah, I knew a few. So let's look at the eight traits of likability. Um, first is captivating. Well, before yeah, we'll we get to the, yeah. uh, the diagram, yeah. can we talk about why likability is important? Well, so. Because there are a lot of people who are likable who don't get anywhere, and there are a lot of detestable people who succeed, I think. But as I describe in the book, likability isn't about being nice. It isn't about being pleasant. It's about having characteristics that form a bond with enough people in the audience. Even the people who found Donald Trump likable would never have described him as nice. Not even his 
base, his extreme base. No, they we liked had, his baseness. Exactly. Uh, that's, we that's had, we had the uh, Access Hollywood tape in the yes. middle of the campaign that everyone thought would kill him because it was so unlikable. Right. But here's what the Access Hollywood tape proved, and here's what Donald Trump is proving today. Donald Trump had in 2016 what I call faux authenticity. Yes. There was nothing authentic about who he was in 2016, right? Um, everything about him was contrived, there was including his ideology, by the way, which he, yes. which he believes now because that's what happens with, you know, dictators and, and tyrants and demagogues. They start believing what they stand for once they get the adulation. But people took Donald Trump as authentic because he made mistakes, because he spoke from the cuff. Frankly, I think it was all planned, but they perceived him as authentic. The problem today is there's objective evidence that he's lying in office. Every day. Every day. So it's not just that he's a scoundrel. He's a liar, and Ukraine is killing him, and his numbers are plunging among women in the suburbs, particularly the soccer moms. Um, and he's gonna, he's, he, he doesn't have authenticity anymore. People don't believe him. Uh, as far as his being captivating, well, some people believe him. His base, he'll yes. always have thirty-five percent. And he has come through for them he on has. several issues. He has, he has. Um, but if you look at the eight traits in Trump uh, that I talk about, he's not captivating anymore in the sense that people are worn down, yes. and that is essentially what captivating comes down to. Uh, are you holding the country's interest? Or are you wearing them out? Uh, I, I, think I don't know. When you put a candy bar on the head of a minion, that's pretty <laughs> it's, captivating. It's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> but how did we go from Barack Obama to Donald Trump? People want to change the channel. Yes. It, it, it almost is that simple. They want a, a new program. I don't believe the country swings dramatically from left to right. I believe people are impatient. They want a new program. What's the most entertaining program, okay? Donald Trump isn't new anymore. He's wearing people down, okay? Hope. Just today, we had terrible economic statistics. Terrible. Growth has slowed to well below 2%. The economy is slowing. He's not providing people hope. He's a phony. Um, nobody really ever relates to him in terms of his status, and we can go down the list of the eight traits. Now, for those who, in our progressive audience, who think that he never had any of these traits, trust me, enough people thought he did, and they're plunging. And that's why he's gonna be kicked out of office, because the Republicans already got their policy, the policies that they want. They already got their tax cut. They would do anything for a tax cut for a rich, for the they rich. They got their judges. They got their judges. So. They could get a few more judges, but they're saying, you know what? We already transformed the judici judiciary, and this is tragic. Let's get him out. We've reached the tipping point. So there's no incentive for Republicans anymore to back him. So anything can happen. President Pence, pre President Romney. Uh, President Nancy Pelosi. God willing. President Nikki Haley. She is likable. Well, not to all of us, but, uh, but I, you know, and in my, on your scale, yes. Yes, in my book, I make clear, listen, I'm a progressive Democrat. I do try to, at the same time, uh, explain what makes people who we may disagree with likable to the opposition. All right, so let's take as a given that Trump has blown through his uh, likability store. Uh, a lot of which I think was manufactured by The Apprentice and the mm -hmm. fact that he was a TV star and that gives some kind of automatic believability to people. But uh, And the nightmare, of course, is that we get him out and then he runs anyway in 2020, uh, which could really be a nightmare. But what about the Democrats? Now we have this uh, large group of people who are getting less and less likable every single day just because they're wearing us out, so. You know who uh, the surprise of this campaign has been to me, actually the shock, uh, is Kamala Harris. I had seen her at the 92nd Street Y back in January. And what I said in January to myself and to my friends with me is, she is one of the most likable, charismatic people uh, I've ever seen on stage. I'm not quite sure what her platform is. I'm not quite sure if she's saying anything. I mean, I know she's progressive, but I don't sense more than that. And if she addresses that, 
she's going to win the nomination, and I think she'd be president. So what happened? She never addressed that issue. And in fact, she's not consistent on the campaign stump whatsoever. And I talk about reliability as a, as a trait. So she had her moment at the June debate with Joe Biden, a moment that I, I sided with her. I thought she was entitled to that moment. I sure. thought Joe, Joe Biden has a, a history that he should explain. Um, even if he's better on those issues today, it, he, he was once an anti-busing advocate, and that's a legitimate issue. And so she had her moment. And then she's just been awful at subsequent debates. And she comes across as, which Kamala Harris is this going to be? Um, I think Elizabeth Warren has improved dramatically in her likability. Um, and I was among those who a year ago was afraid that she was unelectable, even though I, I personally share her views. Uh, I think there's something about her that comes across as very electable. Um, and she comes across as extremely authentic. She is the most captivating campaigner I have seen in many years. And she turned it around. And, and yeah, go ahead. And just like you praise Ellen uh, for taking a selfie that got sent around the world at the 2014 Academy Awards, that's Elizabeth Warren's big thing, is right. taking selfies with everybody. Right. So. The audience should know when she takes selfies, that's a, what I call a likability construct. That's a gimmick, by the way, and it's a fine one. There's mm -hmm. no harm to it. But you know it's a gimmick when she had to mention during the debate some throwaway comment as, I love taking selfies. Well, nobody really asked her. But um, she threw that in, and that's what she wants to be known for. She wants to be known as the relatable person. I think her strength is likable. Yes. And I think... Uh, I've always thought that the public in general wants a strong daddy, wants a paternalistic figure, and for some ungodly reason, Trump appealed to them on that basis for a little while. But I think Elizabeth Warren is a woman who projects strength yes. and uh, dependability. In fact, you talk about reliability as right. one of the important uh, uh, and and protectiveness and I think what she has been showing us for some years now is that she is willing to take responsibility for coming up with solutions to things and following through a hundred percent let me say this so I was a huge supporter of Hillary Clinton in 2008 of course I supported President Obama after and 2016 against Bernie I am your typical, not, not all gay guys love Hillary Clinton, but I'd say a majority whom I know. I love Hillary Clinton. Elizabeth Warren is a much stronger candidate. Yes. For those who, who are afraid that the two are similar, here's what Elizabeth Warren is doing right in her authenticity. Hillary throughout her career struggled with how to come across as softer. You know what? Hillary was a brilliant policy wonk. She's a br agree with her on every issue or not. No. She's a brilliant woman, right? So, but she, you can't deny her her smarts. Healthcare, okay. judgment, <laughs> intelligence, yes. Judgment, no. Okay, but uh, Elizabeth Warren <laughs> yeah. does not even attempt to paraphrase Hillary's line, bake cookies, stay at home. Elizabeth, no. Warren, is she, she, Elizabeth Warren projects strength. She doesn't behave any differently than a man would. She doesn't take pictures in the kitchen. She doesn't do any of that phony crap. That's one, a plus. The one thing I wish she would do uh, to help diffuse some of the attacks on her is just say, yeah, I'm for all these things. We need all these things. I can't do it without you, and if you if you got to give me a Senate that's going and a House that's going to do it, right? So let's hey, do this she's together. She's evolving. She's evolving. I she's mean, come a long she way. She wasn't prepared at the last debate, and, and no. she had a bad debate. And all good candidates have a bad debate. But I I, I was surprised that she was not briefed better because you knew she's the new front runner. It was coming at her. Uh, everybody she, said so. And she seemed shocked at it. Well, we we'll shouldn't ignore when... your friend Cory Booker. Yep. You're close to him. You still have him at the top of your list because so, you're friends yes. with him. Yes, but, I've known him for years. Well, I've endorsed him. I've known him for years. Uh, I've endorsed him. I would otherwise support Elizabeth Warren. Um, listen, here's what's interesting about Cory Booker. He is as optimistic and hopeful. You know all the lovey, huggy, unity stuff? that people might say, is this for real? 
He is I say that. <laughs> he is really like that behind the scenes. Well, I, I believe that. Truly. And, and my problem with him, uh, not knowing him, I don't, uh, unlike you, I have no acquaintance with him, uh, but he strikes me as an empty suit. I, you know, he's very good at the photo ops of shoveling the snow, but did he really do anything for Newark? Has he really, I actually think he's a better senator than a, he was a mayor, uh, but I'm not sure I want to hand over the uh, presidency to him. Uh, listen, I'm not objective about him, which is why I didn't write him up about him in my book. Yeah. He's a friend, and I think the world of him. And then, there's, and then there, we should talk about the gay candidate, Pete Buttigieg, uh, 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 raising phenomenal amounts of money. So Where is it all coming from? Here's, he, yeah. and, he, and that's the question. Here's my take on Pete Buttigieg, and let me yeah. say this as a gay activist. I do not side with other gay activists who think Pete Buttigieg is not gay enough. I hear that and I say, what does that even mean, no. right? I, I admire his courage. I really like him, and at one point I considered maybe I would support him. What troubled me was, and I like him a lot, but he had a CNN town hall, not produced by CNN, where he as mayor of South Bend was dealing with police yes. brutality. Yes. And he came, that's when he came across as very distant. Yes. And that's when he came across as brilliant, but aloof. That's why I didn't see him delivering compassion and hope. You know what? The sure antiperspirant commercial, never let him see you sweat, that's not what people want. Exactly. They don't want that. Pete, sweat a bit. Like, 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 give us your heart. We know that you're one of the smartest people ever to run for president. Where's your heart? That's what he's missing right now. So a guy with heart who, I, who perplexes me a little at the moment is Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is someone who we all adored when he was the maverick in the Senate. And here was the guy who was the most progressive, the most brave, always, he was the guy we always agreed with, loved Bernie Sanders. And leading in the polls. But when he stepped into the presidential race last time, this time, suddenly, from my point of view, uh, he becomes less likable. And I'm trying to figure that out. Maybe he's not new anymore to you. And, uh, and <sighs> let me say this. The dynamic of 2016 was perfect for him. He was running against essentially one other candidate, the, the mayor, uh, the, the governor of Maryland ran for five minutes, but he was running against Hillary. Listen, I really liked Hillary, but Hillary, the establishment. Right. There was a huge vacuum for Bernie to come in on. Mm. It was the perfect dynamic. He was new. He's not the new flavor of the month. But he hasn't faded away. He's but still he, holding his own. He hasn't faded away. Um, well, like Trump, he has his core believers, and they are... Uh, they do not go they, away. They are enormously enthusiastic. The viewers that we hear from who are Bernie supporters are far more uh, assertive than supporters of any other candidate. Most of us will vote for anyone uh, against yes, Trump. Certainly. And do you think that will happen? That... In, the, in, in 2020. Who, what do you mean? Anybody who the Democrats put up will uh, end the Trump nightmare. Uh, as I say, I, I think it'll be... I do think the nominee will be probably Pence. And I actually believe this. I think Democrats, if they get rid of both of them, like like the party should, would fear that it that would really look like a coup and backfire against Democrats. I think Democrats are cautious. But if it is Trump, any of them could win. I mean, unless, you know, Russian asset Tulsi Gabbard takes a point or two away. And you've hardly but, talked about Uncle Joe Biden. Um, the word for him is so erratic. Talk about unreliable. He is a wonderful man, but you want to cringe, praying he gets through a speech. Praying, <laughs> praying. Well, look, I'll never forgive him for uh, Anita Hill. Well, he's and, and he never really made up for that. He never. Ne he never gave a clear speech. Yeah. He he allegedly uh, called her and said, "I'm sorry if you were hurt." The kind of passive voice yeah. thing. Terrible. Now this book. I mean, <laughs> let's give you a chance to say, "Who's this book for?" I mean, you talk about corporate people. You talk about Hollywood. I mean, who's it for? Look, for it, any. It's not the first book on likability. It's the first book that looks at public figures and decodes how likable they are. And from there, the reader can take lessons for him or herself. Like, who is my likability doppelganger? So think of it as likability tips 
from 300 people. And let me tell you how this started, which I mentioned in the book. Many years ago, I was a lawyer on the House Judiciary for Chuck Schumer. And Chuck let me produce all the hearings. And I started to take notes on what kind of witnesses were the most likable and appealing. Great. So I started to develop this formula. I went overnight from being a lawyer for Chuck Schumer on the House Judiciary Committee to being Oprah Winfrey's producer. That's the craziest career move. Yeah, I went from Friday to Sunday. I started to take notes on what made her guests likable, and they were the same traits. So through all these jobs, I started noticing what makes people likable. And I have not just eight traits, but 24 sub-traits, so I get pretty specific. All right, well, uh, we have indulged ourselves by focusing on the political uh, presidential candidates for this. There is a ton more in the book. And in fact, you uh, talk about grabbing the audience. You open with a meeting with Osama bin Laden's brother. Yes. Yes. Asking you to do PR for <laughs> them. After 9-11. At, right after 9-11. <laughs> yes. Uh, th there's your tease for getting this <laughs> Yes, book. yes. So, okay. listen, it's, could you, I asked the audience, you see, you see this little UFO on top of my head? Do I seem like the likely suspect for Osama bin Laden's half-brother to ask me to do PR? Well, yes, because you're very effective, but, but, I thought, but, uh, but I listen, you turned him down. Yes, and I thought the whole thing was a joke. I really did. I, uh, not such a joke. You went to the FBI. I did. No, no, no. no. <laughs> once, I, once I realized it was yeah. true, right? Yeah. I did go to the FBI. I went to the FBI. I went to Carolyn Maloney's office. I said, Carolyn, call the FBI. And then I had um, a meeting with the FBI, and I said, listen, I just met with Osama bin Laden's half-brother. This was 10 days after, and it became very clear. The FBI said, yeah, they're going to leave the country soon. Yeah. They, and they were all flown out. They're lucky you didn't end up in a padded room in a straitjacket. Yep. <laughs> well, uh, so lots, lots, lots in this book. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Great uh, to be here. It's been too long since you've been here. And it's called The Turn sooner. On I will. by okay. Stephen Goldstein. Thank All right, and now to uh, the rest of the news. Before we get to all the news, yes. I have to ask you what gave you more pleasure on Sunday? Was it seeing Trump get booed at the World Series, or was it seeing <laughs> Tiger Woods win his 82nd tournament, breaking a record of PGA wins that nobody thought would ever be beaten? Have we become Morning Joe, where we do a sports <laughs> uh, morning segment? Morning Joe. Morning Joe can go to hell for chastising everybody for uh, booing at the stadium. Uh, but Trump. Well, I don't think they all chastised people. Some of them enjoyed it, uh, but they tend to spend some time on World Series games, <laughs> which uh, warms the cockles of my heart. Right. I was happy with both. Happy with Tiger's uh, okay. win. Happy with the booing of Trump. Me too. Uh, now, of course, Trump this week met with uh, faith leaders in the White House on Tuesday. It was a who's who of the anti-LGBT movement in the United States. Halloween came early. Gary Bauer, James Dobson, Pastor Harry Jackson, Pastor Robert Jeffress, Tony Perkins, Michelle Bachman, Ralph Reed. I mean, and no Jews that I could see uh, or look, Muslims. Now look, any time you're looking for the core of Trump's support and what's keeping him in office and what's driving his policy, all you have to do is see who he turns to in his times of trouble. And it's all these extreme right-wing evangelical, I'm going to put quote marks around faith leaders because that's the last thing they are. Uh, but that is that is the driver of policy in this country. But he's but he's uh, nominated a gay guy to be ambassador to Lu Lithuania. This guy Robert Gilchrist yeah. is that a signal that that to the Russians it's time to take over Lithuania Please. again? I, and I want to say something about this uh, Ukraine stuff and the uh, the right wing and Laura Ingraham and everybody piling on this uh, Vind, uh, whatever his name the, is. The military the, guy who, who testified test and said that yeah. they all so took the So everybody is defending him as... Oh, he's this uh, uh, medal-winning veteran, wounded, blah, blah, blah. I, I would defend him on a different basis. He was doing his job. Ukraine is an ally of the yes. United States. The National Security Council should be talking yes. to Ukraine, and especially someone who is from there and can speak the language, whether they're communicating in English or uh, the Ukrainian language. Uh, 
the the goal of these people to imply that there's something treasonous about what this guy oh, is doing. Oh, they have to find something. Oh, I, I know they're liars and creeps and everything, right. but they are they're literally traitors to this country. They are. And you know I'm not a great uh, yeah. uh, jingoist, but. Uh, Really, the the goal of these people is uh, is uh, to sit there and say, you know, I think there's espionage going on. <laughs> He's doing his job. Yes. Oh well, my God. Well, but the big LGBT story of the week was Katie Hill, a uh, congresswoman from a uh, Congress member, out bisexual from California, a rising star in the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. Well, there she is, pictured with a woman she acknowledges having an affair with a campaign aide. Katie Hill in the middle. Yes. Uh, the woman on the right is the campaign aide. Morgan Desjardins, 24. Who she had an, uh, a, a sexual arrangement with, with her husband, yes. evidently. But she says was inappropriate. She denies having keep a relationship. Keep that picture up. Yeah, Don't keep get that rid that of that picture. picture. She denies having a relationship with her legislative director, Graham Who is, Kelly. That's the guy on the left. Uh, but she did pay him a $5,000 election bonus in April. Uh, they well, deny the affair, but she's, you know, she's well, going... Well, that's the uh, one that's particular, that's legally troubling because you are not, by the rules of Congress, and this came out of the Me Too movement, right. you are not allowed to have a sexual relationship with a staff member. Well, it's the campaign aid is a different thing because you're not yet a member of Congress. Uh, she's going through a very hostile divorce with her miserable husband who uh, engaged in revenge porn, which the right wing media was happy to publish on their websites of naked pictures of her uh, or using a bong and having sex and all this kind of stuff. So she chose to say, I'm gone. I'm out of here. You know, I mean, it's, she she had beaten a Republican, a longstanding Republican uh, uh, for the seat. Guy. Steve uh, Knight. A lot of effort was put into it. And uh, now who is uh, going to run again? He is going to run again. And uh, but, you know, so Heaven so she, so Katie says she's going to devote herself to fighting revenge porn. Well, they which is illegal uh, yes, in California. But, you know, anybody coming out of situations like this, they have, uh, we discussed this before the show, there, people tend to have an immediate reaction of, I'm gonna fix this. O.J. Simpson, I'm gonna find the real killer. <laughs> oh, wow. But the analogies to Al Franken disturb me because Al Franken was accused of uh, unwanted touching, right. groping of people, a, a dozen of them at least. Uh, Katie Hill is not accused of doing anything non-consensual. No, I mean, it, it, she might have violated the rules if she had a relationship with that guy, but uh, we don't know. Yeah, but we none of know. it was about we may uh, never know. unwanted groping. All right. Uh, and one other thing about uh, uh, the administration, uh, the we've told you periodically about the death of Roxana Hernandez, yes. who was a Central American immigrant trans woman who died in custody uh, in ICE detention when right. she crossed the border, 33 years old. Well, it now comes out that ICE uh, deleted videotape of Roxana Whoops. in uh, custody. Well, that's a that's a that's a that's a typical uh, author, authoritarian trick. Oh, it disappeared. We have no idea. It uh, you know it expired. Well, then you, then you've got uh, uh, an independent uh, forensic guy looking at the uh, Epstein death and saying it was a it was a murder, not a suicide, which would make more sense. Mm. Anyway, uh, Baden. Anyway, yeah. all right. Um, we're more on the loss of. Uh, Kay Hagan, the one-term Democratic U.S. Senator from North Carolina, uh, she died at 66 years old from complications of Powassan virus. Uh, she beat Elizabeth Dole back in 88 when Obama won, and she beat by eight points. But in 2014, it was an off year, and she was narrowly defeated by this guy, Tom Tillis, which is an indication to you, everybody out there, you got to vote all the time. It's easier in a, in a presidential election year when there's more attention. we got to vote all the time. But she was for same-sex marriage, abortion rights. She opposed North Carolina Amendment 1, and she, she voted for the ACA. She was quite brave in North Carolina. She was. And there's a, a, 
election coming up in Virginia next week yes, that this, uh, includes Danica Rome. Yes, the, uh, and the Republican Party is going all in on anti-gay an anti-gay platform across the state. I hope they will lose. These are legislative races in Virginia. In Alabama, uh, Jeff Sessions is talking about getting back in the race, the, so he'd be up there with Roy Moore. Now, the Trump what, people uh, hate in a Je primary. Yes, the the Trump people hate. Jeff Sessions, yes. because you know, but they're Trump, is, Trump has identified him as a as a villain. So we want Roy Moore to be the candidate against Democrat Always. Doug Jones Always. because he's a child molester. Yeah, but you know, this is all transactional, and uh, Trump, I'm sure, will support Jeff Sessions, and I'm sure that if Jeff Sessions gets back into the Senate, he will support Trump. Well, if uh, Trump is still in office by that time. All right. Uh, and then uh, good I, I, news for Missouri. Yes. Can we go there? We we can. Uh, just a couple of more Senate things. Okay. I, I'm very disturbed to read that Kirsten Cinema in Arizona won't commit to supporting the Democrat in the uh, Senate race uh, next year. Mark Kelly for U.S. Senate. Yeah. She won't commit to voting for a Democrat against Trump. And she says that at this point, well, we always she's not interested. Well, my God, these are easy things. I mean, no, she's always been like this. And uh, uh, Megan McCain made some stupid statement on the View uh, this week, saying, "Well, she used to be a far left winger, <laughs> but uh, now I like her because she's more moderate." She was never a far left winger. No. She was always a moderate to conservative. Uh, we didn't like supporting her for the U.S. Senate uh, as the Democratic uh, candidate because we knew she was going to no. do stuff like this. Oh, well, I mean, it was uh, discouraging. Yes. Did but you it, was not, it, was not, it was nice to see in Alabama that a federal judge blocked their abortion ban. All right. Uh, yeah. let's, let's go to St. Louis. Okay. St. Louis County, uh, a... Uh, uh, wait, I just lost Sergeant it. I, Keith Wildhaber, uh, yes. police sergeant. He uh, he was an out gay man. There, there he, he is. There he is. And he was denied promotion 23 times. Uh, when he complained, he was transferred to another district. They call that a geography lesson. He was uh, told, tone down your gayness and you might get somewhere. And then he brought this civil suit and the department got on the stand and lied about him up, down, and sideways, endlessly. The jury didn't buy it. Not only did they not buy it, they awarded him just under $20 million for his trouble. St. And the Louis county, county. well, and, 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 and bigger, the county executive of St. Louis County is calling for a total reform of the department due to this case. Yeah. It's because it's costing the taxpayers a lot of money for you idiots to misbehave. Well, there's a story in this week's Gay City News, too, uh, a, a sort of accidental murder case that we've reported on before. Yes. Uh, two guys went out and celebrated their anniversary. They're married. Uh, they go home, and one of them takes the dog and goes out for a walk. And there's a drug deal across the street. And he, this guy gets accidentally shot and killed. And uh, so they've been hunting for the killers. But meanwhile, the surviving husband has been going to the cops and saying, what's up, what's up, what's the latest? And they not only will they not talk to him, they laugh at him, they ridicule him. African-American, yes, I think. Yes, yes, both of them, in the precinct house repeatedly. Meanwhile, they're talking to the dead guy's mother and giving her some updates, but they will not communicate with the surviving husband. New York's finest, they call them. Oh, horrible. All right. Uh, uh, back to Virginia. Virginia Beach. Oh, my goodness. Human Rights Commissioner <laughs> Kenick L. L. That's his name. Yeah. yeah. There he is. We'll have a picture of him. Kenick L. from Virginia, the Human Rights Commission. He was just appointed to the commission and immediately uh, said being transgender is a mental illness. Homosexuality is an abomination to the human race. Uh, he, uh, the chair of the commission condemned, do you have his picture? The yeah, chair of the commission. This is the Human Rights Commission. The chair of the commission condemned his remarks but wouldn't remove them. The mayor of, and most of the city council signed a letter saying this is not acceptable. Uh, the commission did plan to meet on Halloween and he was going to resign, but the meeting was canceled, so we'll have an update next week. Hmm. Meanwhile, in Philadelphia, a Comcast senior vice president. Oh. 
Clayton Fennell, or Fennell, Fennell, I assume. Yeah, I'm, I know, I know him. Is him. suing for anti-gay discrimination uh, at Comcast for the last 18 years. Yeah, I mean, he's he was big in charge of LGBT stuff there and and gay issues, but he says he was uh, harassed, uh, denied promotions. An executive coach told him he was too gay and flamboyant toned down the gay stuff mm. and called a faggot multiple times uh, by these folks at NBC. Comcast denies, Ooh. as they do with uh, Matt Lauer. <laughs> well, Comcast has a big reputation in Philadelphia for being very pro-gay and yeah. uh, working very hard to develop uh, pro-LGBT programming and hiring and uh, programs. So. Uh, it's very discouraging to hear very stories like this, but not uncommon. Okay, let's go back to New York City for okay. a second. Uh, so the artist, Keith Haring, you've seen his work. He died in 1990. He painted a mural on a stairwell of the walls of a Catholic youth center. There it is. He had met some of the youth who habituated the center at uh, the Paradise Garage, and they said, come paint a mural on our walls at this our This is youth on center. the Upper West Side. Uh, so it's owned by Ascension Church, and they're selling the building, but they're going to take those murals off the walls and put them up for auction and make $3 million. Now, Minimum. Keith, now, Keith Haring, of course, being openly gay and HIV positive, if he worked for them, they would have fired him. Uh, but they're going to make a lot of money. They said they're going to give some money to the Herring Foundation, but the Herring Foundation is upset that it's being taken out of its element uh, where it was. Yes, private ownership versus... And, it, and for uh, the benefit of the kids. Yes, exactly. So, so it's controversial. Yeah. Uh, also in New York City, uh, the parents of Laylene Polanco, the trans woman who died in Rikers yes. Island prison, uh, away uh, because she couldn't come up with five hundred dollars bail, right. uh, are accusing the city of stalling on their civil suit. Uh, in fact, there's a hearing in court this Friday, and people are showing up for that. Uh, also in New York City, also in New York City, City Council Member Andy King of the Bronx uh, uh, was suspended by the council and fined for his homophobic harassment of staff, misuse of funds. He is unrepentant, uh, but a motion to outright expel him from the body was uh, not passed. In uh, Los Angeles, the Los Angeles County District Attorney has been under fire for not bringing murder charges against Ed Buck yes. uh, earlier, the big Democratic donor who is accused of supplying uh, drugs, uh, crystal meth to uh, uh, poor black men uh, and... Who oh, he was interested in sexually. Yeah, and basically uh, killing them with... A, a couple have died in his apartment, but he wasn't being uh, brought up on any charges. They finally, after the second death, uh, uh, put in some charges. So the, uh, the community is very angry at the DA. And she showed up at a local political meeting of the LGBT political club, and they were yelling at her, and she said, a couple hundred people, and she said, well, here's what happened. Uh, we had an illegal se search and seizure of evidence. The cops went in after the first death, and there was a red toolbox there, and they wanted to look at the toolbox uh, for evidence, and the coroner said to them, go ahead, it's fine. And the, the cops are taking legal advice from the coroner, so they opened it up and it drugs, paraphernalia, none of it now admissible in court because they did not have the right to look at that without a warrant. Well, so that's her explanation. Now, it, whether well, that is sufficient to excuse the uh, tardiness of bringing charges is another it's, question. It's very rare for civil liberties to be uh, you know, abided by these days. In Texas, Ellen DeGeneres' friend, Governor Greg Abbott there, has directed the Child Welfare Agency to investigate whether a mother who supports her seven-year-old's transition is committing child abuse. Uh, the mother, who uh, wants no medical intervention at this time without consulting with her divorced husband, is now receiving threats, and the Republicans in the state legislature want to have a hearing on uh, making transition child abuse, uh, if you do it with kids, uh, in the law. Child abuse. Charming. 
Uh, interesting new study from the Williams Institute, uh, our LGBTQ plus think tank housed at the UCLA uh, Law School. Their new report is on poverty rates in the LGBTQ community. Uh, trans and uh, uh, trans women and cis bisexual women have poverty rates of 30 percent. 30 percent. Uh, uh, bisexual men, uh, cis bisexual men, 20 percent, uh, and it goes down the line. But uh, uh, people of color, of course, have greater poverty rates. Rural LGBTQ people have greater poverty rates. But there's a lot more poverty in the community than is generally acknowledged. Sure, sure. sure. Well, they're, they're getting some money at Spelman College in Atlanta. They got a $2 million match from gay philanthropist John Stryker for an endowed queer studies chair named for Audre Lorde. It's the first chair of its kind in an historically black, black college or university. Spelman is for uh, uh, black women. And has a very good track record of supporting the LGBTQ community, including trans women who they proactively uh, agreed to accept as uh, students. And Newton, Massachusetts is going to get its first openly trans official set to be elected. Holly Ryan is unopposed in her race for city council. There will be now 13 out trans officials in the United States. Ryan co-chaired the Democratic Party's LGBT caucus. Her activism apparently goes back to Stonewall and the, uh, against the Vietnam War. And is the Statue of Liberty trans? Well, there's that new documentary on HBO yes. made by those gay guys, Randy Barbato and, uh, you know. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, which I liked much more than I expected to. I would recommend that you, Liberty something, blah, blah, blah. Liberty, mother of exiles. Yes, so thank you. So they tout the theory that the sculptor, Bartholdi, yes. didn't model the statue on his mother, as is the popular view, but on his brother, his brother went mad, and uh, Bartoldi used to visit him frequently and stare at him because the guy couldn't talk. And uh, the, if, you, there, if you look at it, uh, there's a much stronger resemblance to the brother. So uh, I think this is rank speculation. Uh, rank, but <laughs> I wouldn't go rank speculation. I would. All right. And uh, did. Nice to see in Indianapolis that a non-gay teacher stood up for the gay teachers who were getting fired down there, but the Ron Colley High School. Uh, but one of them who stood up for her colleague is also being fired. <laughs> and uh, they really are ha conducting a purge you know, there. It's, of, it's reminiscent. The arch, hold it. The Archdiocese told all 70 schools to fire LGBT staff or lose church support and nonprofit status. They wow. are really, they're just like intense about this. Where's the Pope stepping in? Not even just the married ones, but right. the, uh, even the, the Pope would say that uh, hiring people who are yep. LGBT is uh, fine. Yep. Ay, ay, ay. Uh, but it's also reminiscent of the uh, uh, California proposed law that got defeated when Ronald Reagan opposed it uh, many, many decades yes. ago because they wanted to have the right to fire teachers who were gay and those who supported the gay right. teachers. Right. And now the Catholic Archdiocese in Indianapolis is uh, putting that into effect. Okay. Wow. Uh, International news? We can move on. Yes, let's right. do it. Well, let's transition with an American and international story of uh, the ABC News correspondent, yeah. James Longman, out gay reporter, who went to Chechnya on a story and was investigating and asking officials there about the reports of killings and torture of uh, gay men in particular in Chechnya. And the general he was talking to, or chief of police, uh, the general in charge of the police, said, uh, uh, asked him, are you gay? And he said, well, haha, why would you ask me that? Which was a little disappointing, but uh, you know, he's in Chechnya. So he said, uh, no, but then he decided before the interview was over, the visit was over, that he would come out to this guy. Uh, with some trepidation, so he did, and he said, you know, what's your reaction to that? And the guy says, well, I wouldn't want to be your friend. Right. Chilling. It, very, very, very chilling, but yeah. very brave to do it. Yeah. Um, where are we in? Well, let's go to Bogota. Okay. In Colombia. I have gone to Bogota. Yes. 
<laughs> Out Senator Claudia Lopez, 49 years old, a leftist, is the first uh, out uh, lesbian mayor of a cap of the capital city Bogota of anywhere in Latin America. She's but the one on the right there. That's her girlfriend on the left. Senator Angelica Lozano, who is bisexual. She ran on a platform of combating corruption and uh, advancing rights for the oppressed. Uh, she said, this is the day of the woman. And, and there they are kissing at the celebration. We united, we won, and we made history. <laughs> yeah. She's also a member of the Green Alliance Party, a former journalist, famous well, for her anti-corruption work. Well, elections there were marred by violence. Uh, seven candidates were killed and dozens attacked and a hundred threatened. So, wow, voting in some of these places is a, is a perilous activity. It is. Okay. Uh, in Croatia, two black gay U.S. soldiers were brutally yeah, beaten right. by a gang of 10 thugs at a nightclub. Uh, they were accused of dancing a little vigorously, and then these thugs come and just beat the hell out of them. A lot of homophobia there. Yeah. Uh, in t uh, Taipei, in Taiwan, 200,000 showed up at Pride, drawing from all over Asia. Many had the support of the president of Taiwan. The whole thing ended outside her office. It's the first since the legalization of same-sex marriage there in May. In Uganda, the government has arrested 16 oh. gay men, uh, or accusing them of being gay. They are all workers at something called Let's Walk Uganda, which is a sexual health charity. They uh, work there and they live there. Yep. And, and Frank Mugish, well, they, they were all given anal exams. Yeah. Uh, th they face life in prison for this in the, in this uh, country. They didn't do the death penalty yet. Frank Mugisha of the group, the LGBT group there, said they were all eventually released uh, through the intervention of uh, civil rights lawyers, but they were charged with, under the law, with uh, having gay sex. And there are big calls for the government to drop the charges because, again, the penalty is life in prison. Well, the laws aren't very friendly in South Korea either, but President Moon welcomed the new New Zealand ambassador to South Korea, who is an out gay man, Philip Turner, and he brought along his husband, Hiroshi Ikeda, and it was all a very friendly meeting and uh, very correct, and everybody shook hands and everybody greeted each other, and that's considered uh, quite a breakthrough to have the president of South Korea uh, formally and in a friendly fashion greet the out gay ambassador and uh, his husband. Can't we all get along? Uh, <laughs> encouraging news from St. Lucia, the Catholic Archbishop Robert Rivas, R-I-V-A-S, called for a repeal of the law banning gay sex. Uh, after a 17-year-old boy took his own life for being gay in despair, he called for all Caribbean nations to reconsider their anti-gay laws. And uh, the Vatican is, uh, bishops are calling for reconsideration of ordaining married priests. Uh, well, yes, it only took a thousand years for them to do this. Well, but they have ordained married uh, no, priests. No, they, no, uh, people no. who were Protestant. They, don't, uh, they didn't ordain them. If you were in an Anglican priest and you were married and yeah. you wanted to defect to the Catholics, <laughs> yes, they accepted you with your wife. Yes. Uh, and but th they as don't, a priest. Yes, but they don't ordain them. Uh, they still don't ordain uh, married married men or men who want to be, you know. Is don't. that a big difference? And priests, can, and priests can't get married uh, I, if they're... If, I understand, but all. if you're accepting an Anglican yeah. minister who's married as a Catholic priest... It is a foot in the door, and you'd think they'd get over this. But, but how about women priests? How about gay, openly gay priests? Well, sure. You know, uh, uh, that'll so, take another thousand years. So they're proposing, they haven't accepted this yet, but the bishops are proposing that they experiment with ordaining uh, married Catholic priests in like a remote corner of the Amazon right, or something. Because there's nobody there to be be a priest. Yeah. Um, by the way, uh, uh, my my friend Bernard Lynch, who is an out gay out gay priest, uh, he's being honored by the president of Ireland. Uh, they honor a whole bunch of people who work in other countries, and he did tremendous AIDS work. That'll happen on November 21st. In Panama, uh, they're moving to ban marriage equality in the Constitution, uh, but such a provision would have to be approved by their own high court. Uh, 
uh, where there's already a gay marriage case that they're dragging their tails on. So, you know, they're they're under the inter-American human rights thing, and they're supposed to all do it down there. It's a total violation of the ruling it by is. the Inter-American Court of Human Rights. And uh, uh, the question is, what enforcement mechanism does the court have versus a country like Panama that wants to completely... Uh, uh, you know, defy them. How about the new president of Argentina, Alberto Fernandez? He says he's proud of his drag queen son, uh, who is a, a performer, who has a girlfriend. He's, he's well, he, he's fluid sexually. The president says, my son is a rights activist in that community. I would worry if my son was a criminal, but he's a great man. Now, the son, on the other hand, is not thrilled about having a father who's the president of the country because it draws a lot of attention to him. But uh, it, it, the father is accepting. And uh, in London, we'll see how accepting people are. <laughs> Next spring, they're going to have a Muslim pride parade yes. uh, in London. That has been voted, approved, whatever. So we'll see how they follow through and, and what happens. And Lord Andrew Adonis of the Labor Party came out this week. Uh, he's a member of the House of Lords, a labor politician, had been married, served in the various administrations. Anyway, okay, we got, all right. Uh, all right, AIDS news. Hey, you know, we forgot to mention that Magic Johnson turned 60. I think that's quite an achievement. That's he great. Th threw an enormous Congratulations. Party. Yeah. Uh, however, in Pakistan, it's a little more bleak. Oh. Uh, they have now found thousands of people suddenly turning up HIV positive, including 900 children. Dirty needles. Dirty a, single, ne a single pediatrician using well, dirty needles is the source of a lot of it. Uh, a lot of it, but there are other people using and sharing dirty needles. It's, uh, let's not go back to the well, patient zero. Uh, no, but this doctor kind of charged construct. 20 cents for a visit to parents who earn $60 a month. This is, it's and a, he denied it. He denied it at first. He's been charged with manslaughter, and he is still working elsewhere. Uh, yes, he is. The government is very slow to respond, get drugs to these but kids. But some people are on drugs, yes. and that makes me feel hopeful. Well, 35, ki 35 kids have died already, and yes. don't forget, this is a disease that takes a long time uh, to kill you. Uh, things vary depending on your uh, general well, health to be in and with. then a lot of people are freaking out about this uh, among the HIV positive adults some of them have been killed by their own family stigma. members stigma stigma right. is still uh, the huge disease All right. on the other hand in Ireland uh, the uh, prep for free for all who are at risk is being offered as well as monitoring, testing, and counseling. Uh, but, so that is a good thing. But the big news is they're <laughs> going to make a movie about Elizabeth Taylor about her AIDS activism in the 1980s. And she's going to be played by Ra Rachel Weiss. Vice. Vice. Yeah. Okay. It's called a special relationship. Um, she had a special relationship with a gay guy uh, named Roger Wall. Her personal assistant. Who, I thought, I figured, you know, a special relationship would be about her friendship with Rock Hudson, but no, it's about uh, her assistant. And the script is by the guy who wrote Slub Dog Millionaire, Simon Beaufoy. So yeah. it's got, uh, got uh, and it goes into the fact that she sort of ran a drug buyer's club out yes, of her house. Yes, yes, yes. In Bel Air. Uh, she was a mess, but she was a heroine, and she did fantastic work. Mississippi opened up its first LGBTQ health clinic at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. That's a breakthrough. All right. Uh, Entertainment news? Yes, we have about five minutes, so tell us about the plays you've well, been Well, you know, I went to see something called Woman of the World at 59 East 59th because I love Kathleen Chalfant. We have a picture of her. Yes. Who, who has great politics, and she's been in Angels in America and Wit. She embodies this woman named Mabel Loomis Todd. Did you know who that was? I'm a Loomis. Uh, Emily Dickinson's editor. And uh, I didn't uh, know. Really, I, I, the Loomis family. That's, okay, uh, I didn't know anything about Mabel. Yeah. But it was so entertaining, and there's there's a lesbian content in here, even though a lot of heterosexual stuff as well. It was so. In, I mean, I went because of Kathleen, but it was mm -hmm. so engaging and funny. And uh, the run, I, I'm sad to say, the run is sold out through November 17th, but we're, they're trying to get a new venue for it. And I saw the, uh, what are we doing next? The Rose Tattoo, Tennessee Williams comedy of an Italian immigrant woman's tragedy, tempting to find love on the Gulf Coast. It was, in, it was inspired, it's Marissa Tomei there, yeah. uh, with a Scottish actor. They're both playing 
thick Italian accents uh, <laughs> down there in the Gulf Coast. Well, it was originally Anna Magnani, right? Right, right. It's about second chances in love. And Williams wrote it because he was having a relationship with an Italian-American yeah. uh, named Frank Merlo at the time. But it's not Major Williams, even though it has its moments. But I was most uh, uh, also happy with the Archivettes. This is the movie about the uh, lesbian history archives. There's a picture of a lot of the early people. Uh, uh, Joe, jo Nessel Joe Nessel on the Nessel. back left, Deb Adel on the back right. And R Mabel Hampton there on the front left. Uh, it, 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 They've been going since 1974, an archive for lesbians, and it is a tremendously inspiring story. And it, it, inspiring should be to all of you about what are you gonna do with all your stuff? Uh, you know, your letters, your photographs, all these things which they've gotten from all over the world. And I'm sometimes, you know, I can be cynical about uh, historical collections like that, but they are a wonderful resource for people and they do get visitors from all over the world who make use of that material. They do. Yeah. Uh, and I am continuing to see some of the movies that are uh, going to be shown in the uh, documentary film festival coming up, uh, Doc NYC, uh, November 6th through 15th here in New York. 300 films. They've got a dozen films at least that they're advertising as specifically LGBT content wow. from uh, the Capote tapes about Truman Capote to Killing Patient Zero about exploding that myth and uh, biography of Maurice Hines and uh, on Broadway that's a whole backstage uh, look at uh, with a lot of Broadway stars. Your eyes are getting yeah. bigger. Uh, peer Kids about uh, all the population hanging out at the Christopher Street Piers. Or trying to. Yeah, so go to docnyc.net uh, for the full rundown. Uh, you'd really be doing yourself a favor to see some of these documentaries. All right. Uh, Colin Firth and Stanley Tucci have finished filming Supernova. They're going to play a gay couple where Tucci has dementia and they drive across the country to places where they used to be to try to spark his mind. Oh my oh, God. Well. I'm so sick of that construct. <laughs> They're doing that, uh, you know, half the shows on TV are doing that. Uh, okay. Yeah. And uh, the Leslie Lohman Museum of Gay and Lesbian Art in Soho is dropping gay and lesbian from its name. <laughs> so they say we can't keep up with the alphabet and we want to be as inclusive as possible. They're trying to raise seven million dollars for more space, actually, down there in Soho. So it's, they're just the Leslie Lohman Museum. They're going to be the Leslie Lohman Museum, yeah. Well, uh, you know, we're sympathetic to this debate. We're Gay USA because it rhymes and because it's been that name for 35 years. But we cringe a little at having to admit that we are Gay USA right. when the world has evolved as much as it wa has. If you have a better idea. Don't bother. I want to say We're one, not changing I want to say one thing show. about archives. Yeah. Most of it is letters and things from the old days, but if you have just uh, electronic email and things, they got nothing. So like, uh, uh, you know, some people are saying you should print out your emails if yeah. they have a personal nature of some historic value so that they can be preserved down the road. And the greatest things are diaries yes. and journals that people keep. That is fascinating material. Some so. of these women drove across the, half across the country to Ohio because this woman was, a late woman was trying to donate her stuff or her executor and the family was trying to destroy it. They got in the car and they <laughs> saved it. Intrepid Lesbians. On that note, we're done and we will see you next week.